The Lord be with you. Greetings from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Junction City, Wisconsin. I'm Pastor Timothy Roser, and on this last Sunday of the church year, I invite you to join me for morning daily prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 93. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 51, beginning at verse 4. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning lest he come suddenly and, you f f and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading, our appointed sermon text, is from the letter of Jude, verses 20 through 25. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. These final verses of the letter of Jude strike a powerful note of encouragement anchored in our Savior Jesus Christ. It's a blessing sorely needed by a church seriously threatened and in danger. What danger? Well, since Jude's letter is only 25 verses long, let him tell us. He writes, Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. A typical biblical greeting. 
Yet there are serious issues at stake. And out of deep concern for the people of God, Jude gets right to them. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once delivered, once for all delivered to the saints. Sounds like Jude wanted to write about the glories of our salvation, but now they have to fight for their faith. We too might want to focus solely on the good stuff that God has done, is doing, and will do for us, but we also face trouble in these last days. Jude's call to contend for the faith is needed now just as much as it was needed back then. The danger? Jude says, certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were destined, designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of God into sensuality and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. False teachers and false teaching. Sadly, nothing new, but still dangerous. They pretend to be pious people at first, as false teachers often do, but over time, wishing to satisfy their own sinful desires, they depart from God's word. Bit by bit, they change, often pulling others along with them. Eventually, though they may claim to be faithful believers, they deny God the Father and Jesus Christ as their Savior. Jude offers examples from the Old Testament of such people and the judgment they receive from God. He continues, Now, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Yes, the judgment of God will finally come upon the ungodly. It came on those who disobeyed during the Exodus. It came on the angels who rebelled against God. It came on Sodom and Gomorrah for their open sin against God's created order. Yet in like manner, these people also, these false teachers Jude warns us about, relying on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. This is certainly not the way things should be. Even the angels of God are careful in reacting to the sin they confront. Jude points this out when he says, But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Michael did not take vengeance and punishment into his own hands, but placed those judgments in the hands of God. That's not what these ungodly people are doing. Jude says these people blaspheme all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they have walked in the way of Cain, and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error, and perished in Korah's rebellion. Once again, the Old Testament provides examples of God's judgment being carried out. Cain, who killed his brother Abel, was cursed to wander the earth. Balaam, who was blinded to the truth by his love of money and who tempted the Israelites to follow false gods, was slaughtered in battle. And Korah, who refused to obey God's man Moses, was literally swallowed up by the earth in the course of his rebellion. These are the kinds of dangerously sinful false teachers who are all around us, and they're closer than you think. As Jude puts it, these are hidden reefs at your love feasts. As they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves. Waterless clouds swept along by the winds. Fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea casting up the foam of their own shame. Wandering stars for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. Just as the hidden or sunken rocks endanger every boat that comes into their neighborhood, so these ungodly deceivers are a constant menace to believers because they skillfully hide their true nature. Such people claim to hold to the faith and lead a Christian life, but they're hypocrites, pretenders, who will end in everlasting disgrace in the darkness of hell. Jude says, It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all, and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, 
and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. Judgment is coming, and when it does, the unbelievers will be exposed for what they are. In that day, the hypocrites and the false teachers, the openly sinful and the uncommitted, will be charged with every evil word and every evil work they have done. In that day, they will have to bear the punishment of all their guilt. All this shouldn't shock or surprise us. We were told this was coming. As Jude continues, but you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you, in the last time, there will be scoffers following their ungod own ungodly passions. It is these who cause divisions, worldly people, devoid of the Spirit, for the Spirit of God does not live in them. They are servants of the Spirit of darkness. After all that warning, Jude says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. Contend for the faith. How? First, Jude says, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith. As false doctrines abound and false teachers try to tear you down, gather together around God's word and sacraments, and find mutual comfort and consolation in the gift God has given you. Second, Jude says, contend for the faith by praying in the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who moves us to pray. As we meditate on God's word, the Spirit gives content to our prayers, and we speak back to God words that God has given to his church. As one church father put it, we pray in the Holy Spirit when we are moved by divine inspiration to ask for heavenly help so that we may receive the good things which we cannot obtain on our own. Third, Jude says, contend for the faith by keeping yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. We live in expectation, full of confidence that our Lord will show us his mercy here on earth and on the last day when he comes to take us to himself forever. Until that day, reach out to one another in mercy. Save others by snatching them out of the fire of judgment, by calling them back to repentance. Yet, as you do so, be careful that you are not snared by sin. Of course, all our human strength, ability, and power cannot accomplish these things. Only through the everlasting mercy of God, freely given to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, can we be forgiven, freed, and empowered to contend for our faith. Therefore, as we live in this gift of faith, we offer our praises to the God who has saved us, the God who has created this faith in us, the God who will take us to himself forever on that great last day. As Jude concludes, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you reign among us by the preaching of your cross. Forgive your people their offenses, that we, being governed by your bountiful goodness, may enter at last into your eternal paradise. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord 